everybody! Welcome back to the Wattpad Book Club! I'm your host, Phoenix, and today I'm with my co-host, Jolene, on this very, uh, biblical reading today. <laughs> yes. About to see religious praise, stuff in this bitch. <laughs> praise the Koopa. Yes. Praise thy Waluigi. He is our savior. He He's gonna come back down to Earth and, and save us with a simple wah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that was cringe. I'm sorry. Oh god. No, you're. Uh, it's fine. After I said it, I like cringed to myself. <laughs> I was like, mm, no. <laughs> but today, as the title suggests, and also the wheel did last time, we're reading more Waluigiism. One of like this was like the second book we read together, and I'm, and we're finally going back to it. Wow. It only took. Several months. Yeah, several months. <laughs> Shit, when did we when did we film it? We started September, October. Fuck, I'm gonna have to look at that later. Mm. But uh, we gotta we gotta read more biblical. Uh, the, the Book of Wa, the Holy Spirit Bible thing. Uh, we gotta. We gotta learn the religion, we gotta confess our sins to Waluigi himself. I'm very excited. <laughs> I was so excited my mouse almost pressed the fucking X button off of all my tabs. Oh god. Yeah. I'm innovative. <laughs> Alright, we're on chapter three, and these are pretty long, so maybe we'll do two of these? I don't know. They're, they're very long. I was scrolling through to see how long they were, and I was like, oh, I got reminded why we never really finished this. I mean, it's it's like reading the Bible. It's very long. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Uh, do I have my coin? I do! Alright, what do you want to be, heads or tails? Uh, head. Alright, you want to be head? Okay. And what is your probability that this is gonna fall off the table? <laughs> probability. Okay, so it's fallen the last couple times, but I have a little more faith in you. Okay. So I'm gonna say 70. Okay. It fell off the table. <laughs> I knew it. Oh god, what did it land on? No, no, Tails. It's Tails, I read. Oh my god, it's been five months. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> this has been long Yeah, awaiting. five, nearly six months. <laughs> Alright, chapter three. Alright, let's see if we remember any of the lore that we remember from last time. Should I be reading I this like a priest? I remember there's a ton of group. <laughs> should, I be, should I be reading this like a Lift your back like, like, you know? Yeah. I, feel like I, I feel like I should be reading this like I'm up on like the, you know that little podium that priest have. The podium? Yeah, the podium and be like, and then he came down and said to build a missile with 300 bananas <laughs> or some shit like that. <laughs> Alright. Chapter 3. See seeing that area was seething with uncontrollable rage, Cranky Kong decided to start his story as a distraction. Once, the people of the world were incomprehensibly immortal and there were few who had the courage to be righteous. During this period of uncertainty and chaos, there lived a Kong li named Noah. Basic ass name for a <laughs> Mario Kart. <laughs> who feared for the safety of her friends and family. Sorry, <laughs> the name Noah just threw me <laughs> My bad. <laughs> the great stars saw her plight and instructed her. I command thee to build a missile 300 bananas tall and 50 bananas in diameter. And then the great star explained that the missile will be shot into into the moon, which it would alter the tidal flow and cause a pro, prodigious flood. To Prodig it would cause a flood to sweep the land. <laughs> And Noah would survive the flood by using a. Oh my god, is this like the fucking. The, oh my god, Noah's this is the arc. fucking R's arc. Oh my god, no wonder I was like, that's a basic ass name. They just. Oh my god, we're so smart. Wait, did they do this last time where they, they pulled some of the actual like, Bible stories? Yeah. I, re I remember mm -hmm. that. 
uh, for the, the so the great star rained a meteor upon Noah's ab a what ab ab abode abode that was full of star bits, which could be used to pay the costs associated with the deeds she was commanded to perform. But Noah could not construct a rocket ship on her own, so she contracted a rocket company. Wait a minute, what fucking era is this? <laughs> I thought this was took place back in like the old days. They didn't have this kind of technology. You just hire a rocket company to do all this shit for you. <laughs> Look, things happen. Yeah, we're innovating. Time change. Yeah. <laughs> Evolution. <laughs> she contracted a rocket company called Astral Ride to build her a missile. And the CEO of Astral Ride asked Noah why she wanted a rocket ship, for he knew the importance of managing a relationship with his customers. And Noah replied that his life was short, and she wished, and she wished to see the beauty of the universe before he died. Noah also bought a uh, fuck submarine on Craigslist. <laughs> Shit, I don't know Craigslist is in the Mario universe. <laughs> Now, after the rocket was complete, Noah had an exceeding ob obvious realization. That is, Noah came to the understanding that committing mass genocide <laughs> against the people on Earth is impossibly unethical. <laughs> so the great star replied that genocide is immortal if God does it, and even if it was this way, <laughs> and even if it was this story should be understood as an allergy. Besides, the great star furthered the end would surely justify the means, and that it will, s and that it saw in her the spark of morality. And at first, no one wanted to believe the great star, for it was, for it was convenient to think that she and those she cared about would des be, what fuck, those she cared about, deserve to be saved. But she knew it was a lie, because it was an individual choice that defines ethics. Even con contemplating such an act- Contemplating? Was, yeah, I, I got that. <laughs> Unless they actually said it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> was proof that the great star was not all-knowing. But she was certain that she- That if she declined to carry out the act of her great star, would commit it again through a different host. If this were to happen, then the discretion of the people of the Earth was all but certain. And so, when it came time to fire the rocket to the moon, Noah and those she cared about chose to board the rocket in the hopes of the people of the world for the- and wait, with the hope of the world- wait, hope of the people of the world from cataclysm. <laughs> Man, I'm fucking struggling. <laughs> I don't know, just like just like this this paragraph went now that I'm like looking at, it all looks like it's so clumped that it like fucks with my reading. If that makes sense. I understand. Yeah. No, I completely get it. Cause like I get in the middle, I'm like, wait, fuck, where did this line go? Where am I? <laughs> As the rocket left the atmosphere, the great star realized what Noah had done. It wished to save her, for it believed she was, uh. Vi vigorous and just. So the great star used his gravity to pull the rocket 0 0.1 degrees off course, and Noah's ship shot into the vast, the vast expanse of empty space. The rocket passed, passed some nearby baby stars called Luma, who blessed her and her companions with the ability to survive in space. <gasps> Is this Rosalina? <laughs> Holy shit, that'd be so cool. Please, please, please. <laughs> Is Rosalina your favorite? Oh my gosh, she's so cool. And I, I do I always picked her a lot when I played Mario Part Mario Kart Wii. She she was she was mm -hmm. that I didn't realize that they made her like a heavy driver for some reason. I don't I don't know what heavy was her weight class. She's like nine feet tall. Yeah. Yeah, but like she's, she's tall. Yeah. And I, I don't understand why she was a heavy weight class. They fixed it later, but that I that didn't make no sense to me. Uh Fuck. <laughs> oh, the bad spy campaign. Okay. And the Loomis took kindly to them as they were, were invited on a hospital planet. And for a moment, it seemed like the in a roundabout way the Great Star had succeeded in setting apart those were righteousness. So the Great Star decided that there was no need to inhibit. In, uh, <laughs> 
and a hill. Fuck. <laughs> Jolene, why am I bad at reading? <laughs> and, and annihilation. And I just realized I was muted. My bad. <laughs> annihilation. Is that really how you spell annihilation? Yeah. Damn, I guess you don't really see that word pop up. <laughs> For there was barely enough colonizers to grow a new s society in the place where the good of the world would grow untamed by evil. However, some of the companions resented their voyage despite the immense virtue that they had accomplished. For life in space was cold and harsh, and their experience on Earth was privileged. So many of the would-be settlers built a ship so they may escape their quarantine and return home. Knowing that what the great star would do if the deserters were to return to the earth, the remaining individuals sought to forcibly restrain them. So the returners took up a makesh took up makeshift arms and murdered the remainders, except for Noah, who had who they left alone as punishment for depriving them of life. And then I scroll. <laughs> and find them in life they they would have had in a purified earth. But the returners were not as skilled as the craft of the spaceship building as the fine people of Astral Ride, and their ship exploded, and Noah was truly alone in space. Damn. <laughs> the, Damn indeed. Yeah, what's that fucking thing? It's like that one piece one with like Robin. It's, it's, I don't know, huh? it, it kind of reminded me of that, where she, she was like the only survivor from her little thing. I don't know. Oh. That's so sad. Yeah, they, like how they didn't let her on the boat, like on, like, their, the boat, because she's like, nah, no, no one likes you, you're weird, and then their fucking thing exploded <laughs> Oh my god, the only thing that saved her life. Those people being an asshole to her. Mm -hmm. SMH. <laughs> This car is the great star to- Love you, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> this caused the great star to realize that it made a mistake, because clearly wickedness resided in the hearts and was not something that could be cured. And killing the killing of those in society were evil who were evil was foully, for evil would inevitably return. Hence the great star began promoting the value of loving companionship to the people of Earth, and it protected the parents so that they could give their child proper upbringings. And the children realized the goodness of the work that their great star has done and continued it as a tradition. And so every year the Kong tribe builds barrel rockets to give thanks to Noah for her sacrifice, so that she may see them from space. And the Kong tribe had been blessed by the fallen star with immunity to explosions, so they were suited for this manner of celebratory. I didn't know they were fucking immune to- that's cool! And you're like, by the way, I, I can't be killed by explosions. Pretty cool. <laughs> just- at that point, I just set things on fire. Yeah. Dude, I, wonder... I think there's a certain someone we know that would've enjoyed that. Yeah. Just setting things on fire. Arson. Me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Yep. Exactly yeah. who was... I had in mind. It was me all alone. I- I- I'm actually derpy mm -hmm. in disguise. <laughs> oh my god. Are you also L? I, yeah, I'm actually editing the, uh, the, the busy pop merch as we speak. <laughs> you're like all- you're all your subscribers at once. Yeah, I, I'm just very- In the lives, you are like, you're going off. Yeah, I'm like- Very skilled, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, while I'm like playing my game, and like, I have my phone next to me, and I'm like switching accounts to like, five different people. <laughs> That's a real talent, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Asa is pretty talented. <laughs> Wanting to finish quickly so that so that as little time as possible was spent on Aria, King Boo quickly began the story of how the Boos were created. What isn't that pretty obvious? It's just dead people. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Once there was a time when there were only one tribe that existed in the land. Tribe saw the glory of the great star and were envious. So the tribe concocted a plan to build a tower of Boobel 
into the heavens so in order to become as mighty as a great star. But as they built higher and higher, they started to suffocate and die because the atmosphere had no oxygen. And so the tribe conven convened with a convened with a witch to concoct a potion that would give them the builders life after death. The brave builders who consumed the potion were known as Boos. However, when the great star saw the tower that was being built, it was displeased, as it believed it was it believed its own su supremacy was absolute. So it cursed the Boos to be destroyed when they came into contact with starlight. Hence, the Boos no could no longer survive at the very top of the tower. So the Boos returned to the bottom of the tower and spread across the land on cloudy cloudy nights. The Boos ventured away from the great tribe, for they feared that they would be turned, turned upon because the people of the world would blame them for the failure of the construction of the tower. Alright, scroll. <laughs> Long paragraphs. But the great star was still angry at the this singular unit of the tribe, so it cursed and deformed their bodies into obscure shapes. And the one tribe divided itself into seven as punishment for their supposedly divine ruler of daring to exist har harmoniously with a single society. But the booze still kept their old shape, for they were upon. For they. Wait, fuck. For they were beyond the reach of the great star, and what's more, they knew the recipe for the old potion that would, that could still turn the creatures of the world into booze. So they constructed mansions in, in the image of the great tower to trap unwitting victims into a second life as a boo. Now the sages knew that part from, fuck, <laughs> they knew part from the human tribe due to their blessings. All the other tribes were vulnerable to these tricks, but it was understood that anyone who entered the Boo Mansion would not leave alive. So, children were warned by their parents to never venture in from their villages, and the Boos knew that if they expanded their influence further, they would be obliterated from the world by the tribes, and only those who were willing to sacrifice their identity for a second chance at life would enter a Boo house. None of, this, of the stages were sure, were sure how King Boo had managed to circumvent disgrace Sorry, supposed constraints by being there, but by being there at night. But he suspected it from had something to do with the booze tribe's blessing for the fallen star. Anxiousness to finish quickly because she remembered that she might have to wait. <laughs> Anxiousness to finish quickly because she remembered that she might have left the oven on. Elder Piranha quickly began Me. her story. <laughs> Just interrupted the boo. She's like, wait, I gotta, I gotta tell my story real quick. I, I love, I left the, the chicken I roast. I the oven on. <laughs> oh my god, my chicken. My rotisserie chicken. I just, I, my cookies are on fire. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> so she spoke of a time when the piranha tribe covered the earth and was accomplished by, in, wait, innum innumerable, fuck yeah, mindless creatures. And then a piranha plant named what the fuck? <laughs> Acrom acromide? Acrylamide. Acromide. Okay. Acrylamide. Acro um acrylamide. That's close. <laughs> Decided that the domain of the piranha tribe was not enough, for it was shared with creatures. And so Acrylamide started a campaign promoting the Consumption of animals by the basis of the health benefits of plants. However, the piranha scientists warn that although the consumption of living creatures was of nutritional benefit, it threatened to undermine the national ecosystem. For without the carbon dioxide that was a byproduct of creatures' breathing cycle, the piranha tribe wouldn't be able to conduct photosynthesis. But Ackermind contended with that the words carbon dioxide and photosynthesis were made up. <laughs> and <laughs> What is this, the fucking Lorax? <laughs> and even if they were Yeah, real, they're about to be still in air. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be the I'll fucking see canned air at the store. Really? Yeah, they got canned air. It's in, like, the workout section. 
Why? It's like pure oxygen. Oh my god. You I don't know, when you're out of breath or something? I guess. And even Who knows they... when you'll need it. Yeah. <laughs> and even if they were real, the actions of consuming flesh was a personal choice. And a vast majority of creatures on the earth had depleted, wait, depleted due to Ackerman's proliferation of misinformation. As a result of these actions, the Piranha tribe became weak with fatigue, and Akramai died of oxygen poisoning as she could not breathe. She's <laughs> 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 like, hey, I think we should eat meat, and they're like, actually, it's not really good for you. And she's like, man, fuck you, that's not real. And then she's just like, <laughs> and seeing that it happened in the world, the Great Star decided to give the beasts of the land intelligence, and the creatures became eleven tribes and fought their weakened oppressors yeah oppressors with such forcidity that the piranha tribe was reduced to a, a number a hundredfold and the piranha tribe became came to realize that this course of events was a gift for had the great star not intervened they would have certainly have died the piranha tribe took it as a lesson not only in the importance of science but also the the Decim decimation. Decimation, thank you. <laughs> that would come a come to pass when a society is unwilling to consider that it may be wrong. So, the Piranha tribe has acted with responsibility ever since. It, they have graciously accepted the blessing from the fallen star of being able to excrete resin that can resin. be... Oh, uh, what? <laughs> oh, resin. resin! Oh my god! <laughs> Or create resin that can be used to build pipes. Holy sh... Resin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a master at English, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You taught me English. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You're obviously thriving right now. <laughs> See, and I'm like, I'm like your star pupil. Yeah. <laughs> Cranky <laughs> Kong nudged Blue, the Yoshi, to tell the, the second last story, for every sage knew that Irio intended to have the final word, and Blue started his tale with the immoral words, There is good in this world. There once was a Yoshi named Yoshu, <laughs> who was the greatest and most righteous being. Raishu lived a blessed life with friends he greatly cared for, while he also exposed- while he also being exposed to hardships that allowed him to emphasize Oh, empathize with others. So, Oshio was chosen as the leader, as the ruler of the Yoshi tribe, and his teachings were to be written down. A demon of mor morale power knew the good- Marginal. Oh, thank you. Marginal power knew the good that Yoshio's teachings would bring about. So before the transcription could begin, the demon came upon Yoshio and sought to curse him. But the demon was not all-powerful. So, a craftily constructed, constructed way to turn Yoshio into an agent of evil. The demon forced Yoshio into an ultimatum. He could either give up his values but keep his memories, or vice versa. The demon was sure that Yoshio would choose to keep his memories and give up his values, for it knew that Yoshio saw the time he spent with his friends as the most precious aspect of his existence. But Yoshio chose to keep his values and undid the demon's plan. And his ideas were still remembered to this day. Seeing that the other sages were confused at the point of the story, Yoshio offered that there was in fact nothing special about Yoshio. Had the demon had had been had been able to alter Yoshio's values, then the other Yoshi tribe would have found another way to write a book. Indeed, the ethics in the book of those of Yoshio's success. That <laughs> why did I fuck up like that? Society <laughs> and not defined by his existence. Rather, the reason why the demon's bargain is remembered is because of how unremarkable it is. Think about it. If the demon came and forced upon you the same choice, then you would elect to keep your values. Why? Because if you if you kept the memories and lost your values, then you'd be a completely different person. Whereas in losing your memories or keeping your values, your identity will remain the same. This tale gives us confidence that we do in fact have a distinct self and have an identity separate from 
from that of the circumstances we inhabit. This high mind analysis was perhaps not expected from the tribe blessed by the fallen star to momentarily be able to float in the air. And then scroll. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it came time for Yurio to speak. And rather than telling the traditional human myth that some of the other sages were aware of, he began the story about about that was based only on skepticism. Wait, ske speculation. Speculation. Thank you. <laughs> Before the great star told Ario to go f from his father's home to the promised land in the Ar arbitrary. Arbitrary. What's fucking arbitrary? Oh, oh arbitrary. Look, okay. Arbitrary location. Ario worked in his father's theorem. Theorem's idol shop, and the shop manufactured idols and divine deities. Many of the idols were made of the image of the great star, but formed with the distinct characteristics of the tribe worshipping it. One day, Aria picked up a sledgehammer and smashed all the statues into pieces. Upon returning to the workshop, Theorem asked Aria why he had desecrated the holy idols that they, that they relied on for sustenance. Aria replied that he had done no such thing, and that it was the holy statues who had smashed each other to discover which deity was the strongest. Wow, this kid's fucking lying! <laughs> now, wow. Ario had per persuaded Theorem, and the idea of multiple gods existing at the same time was foul. It was because of his realization that the great star decided that the human tribe will become the chosen. Damn. All because of some punk ass kid. <laughs> <laughs> the message was clear, preach Ario. There cannot be multiple correct systems of beliefs. Now Ario had invited the other sages to share their tales for the purpose of discovering some absolute truth. And it was now clear to the other sages that Ario was attempting to light liken their tellings of individual tales with diversity of Ario's idols. The subtext was that individual wait fuck the sub the, uh, fuck I read the wrong <laughs> the subtext was that their coherent belief must be illogically oh illogical for their distinct stories featuring conflicting versions of the great star and Arya said that like Arya's rejection of the false deities it was now time for him to recognize the error of his con Tem Contemporary. contemporaries and forge a new path this statement seemed at, seemed as though it had a a meaning behind that of the story Ario had told for the mere rejection of the idol of coexistence was not in itself a system of values so this inside mention of a new path insidious. oh shit <laughs> insidious mention of a new path could only be Constructive of Aria's personal beliefs. But strangely, the other sages had a roundabout way of, of a, a fuck appreciated the mul the multitude of Hold on. <laughs> My brain I need a water. <laughs> You're hydrated. You get You're like hydrated. You, I think I, I think I mentioned it before on this Wattpad reading stuff. Like, you ever, like, read mm -hmm. out loud for a long period of time, or, like, speaking out loud, or, like, doing, like, a speech, and you start getting, like, full mouth? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm feeling right now. Huh? I feel like my brain shutting off. <laughs> and, like... Oh. And I'm, like, tripping over, like, easy words. <laughs> but strangely... <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Yeah. The other sages had a roundabout way appreciated the multitude of perspectives that had bore witness to. They knew that the value of their beliefs was not an in innate qu quality, but a function of their personal efforts and decisions. Ario would have would have understood this as well, for the Fallen Star had blessed the human tribe with the ability to use power-ups that allowed them to inhabit different, m different modes of beings. Unbestowed to the sages, a what? A it of light <laughs> appear in the sky. The it Expanded, doubling and then tripling in size until it engulfed the sky. 
I mean, what, how do we pronounce that? It's so fucking. <laughs> I don't know. In a single bolt of lightning. I think it's Greek. Is it? I want, it just looks like an upside down L. Mr. I L? I don't remember. Alright. Um. <laughs> <laughs> and a single bolt of lightning struck the ground before Ariel, for Ariel in such a way that he tripped backwards and almost fell over the edge into the volcano. The sages all understood that Ariel was being warned that only his story was inherently wrong, rather than only his, only his being correct. There could in fact be multiple truths, each with their own morals and weaknesses. So Ario came to believe that under the author, uh, authority of the great star, he must treat other tribes as equals. But Ario did not think to e examine the ideas that promoted his equality and only understood the d fuck <laughs> div fuck <laughs> div divinity of the great star's words. And now I'm gonna popcorn over to you, John. <laughs> Wait, this is for chapter four, right? Chapter four! Okay, great, because I just had to load an ad, so I had to go. <laughs> Buy a Tesla! <clears throat> it came to pass that Irio's son Nario came to childbearing age, and Nario bore Dario under the reign of Nario. Or should I say Nario? I think Nario. It's like Nario. Okay. <laughs> the human tribe had expanded its territory to that of an empire. The humans had been so fruitful that they had made up 23 of every 25 of the empire's inhabitants. So, total was the prevalence of humans as an ethnic group within the, this empire that many could not imagine the existence of other groups aside from humans. Most of the minority tribes lived in the outskirts of the Empire, on land that had been conquered by force. Though some of the minorities desired self-determination, most focused on maintaining their way of life, because any act of rebellion would certainly be crushed. That is not to say that the individual minorities were afraid of risking their lives, but rather felt a sense of obligation to provide for the next generation. For it was their traditions that maintained their cultural identity, and their cultural identity that gave their lives meaning. <clears throat> oh damn. One such outer region of the empire, called Xinyan, was inhabited by descendants of the Koopa tribe. All the Koopa in the land regularly went and listened to the story of... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce Listen. it. <laughs> I wish I knew this language. The oh gosh, wait. Okay, we're fine. It's the only mention. I'm okay. dying. Do me too. The cultural unity of the society compelled its inhabitants to depend more autonomy from their human rulers. Why should they be forced to bow to a foreigner in off cap in a far off capital that had no conception of their interests and refused to represent them? In what I say, Nario? Yeah. And Nario yeah, yeah. heard through his informant that the Koopa of Xinyan would surely demand independence if, there were something, if something were not done. So Nario sent his then untested son, Dario, to quell the potential uprising. Now Dario had been brought up in the capital his entire life and had never spoken to a non-human. He did not know their language and had been told tales about the supremacy of man. The legitimacy of his father's rule under which he had grown up his entire life was certainly beyond question. So it was now his job to teach these barbarians that their beliefs and values were subordinate to his own. After a long period of travel, Dario arrived in Xinyan. Dario saw their foreign customs and was offended, for the Koopa were idolatious and did not know the word of the great star. This had to change, so Dario mandated the story of the great star be taught every Koopa youth, but none of the children celebrate, celebrated the great star, or they were set in their ways and content. Consequently, Dario decided that he should punish the Koopa if they failed to adopt the belief of the great star. 
So, traditions such as painting the outside of one shell red to symbolize the gradual evolution of free will became outlawed. And this cruelty struck a nerve among the Koopa. For the continuation of their tradition was the thing they cared about most. Some of the Koopa youth began attacking human officials in Chinyan with the hope of regaining their freedom. This enraged Dario, for his own authority was being challenged by terrorist heathens. As a result, Dario commenced a mass immigration prog what program, providing <laughs> incentives for humans to move to the Xinyan region. If humans made up a vast majority of the population, the Koopa would be forced to assimilate. Damn! Damn, holy shit! Dude, humans are kind of assholes. Not just here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For a while, humans migrated to Xinyan to make new lives for themselves. But despite gradually becoming a minority in the land they had inhabited for millennia, their tradition of the Koopa tribe remained. Dario had not yet made his own rule absolute. Perhaps Dario could have given the Koopa more freedom while gradually assimilating them into the human empire. His father's rule was strong and could maintain power over a millennium while Koopa culture transitioned. The Koopa could be so entwined with human economic machinery that it would have absolutely no chance of escape. Moreover, the Koopa had agency, as real as that of any human, depriving them of freedom that would be needlessly cruel. Unfortunately, these common sense principles are beyond Dario's comprehension. Dario only understood strength, and if he could not make the Koopa submit, then that was the definition of weakness. So, Dario created a network of gulags deeper inside a human empire. He then indiscriminately imprisoned any Koopa caught in any action that was remotely religious. And Dario lied. Is this? Wait. Is Dario? Is Dario? Is Dario Hitler? Wait a minute, now that you're saying that, all the pieces are fitting together and I'm seeing an unsavory puzzle right now. I thought this book was religious. What the- What the fuck? I'm honestly a little scared right now. And Dario- And Dario lied to the Koopa that the so-called education camps were free job skill programs rather than brutal and cruel forced labor. Despite knowing that this atrocity had been occurring, none of the other tribes dared to take any sort of action to pr action to protect the Koopa. The other tribe even continued to trade with the human empire because they relied on human craftsmanship in their supply chains and generally willing to overlook atrocity <gasps> if it served the fi financial interest to do so. And the Koopa stopped practicing the religion for their fear of being torn away from their children like so many of their neighbors. <laughs> oh my god! This is fucked up! <laughs> But still, the Koopa continued to bear many young and were rapidly growing in number. Dario believed this was the final problem he would face. So he <laughs> casually decided to commit genocide via forced sterilization of women. Oh. And one day decided to examine the facilities where the procedure took place. At the time, there was a Koopa called jo Jokibet, who was, uh, who was about to be operated on and had almost completely been robbed of her agency. At this point in Dario's conquest, dominated domination existed as a distinct ideal within his psyche. So, as his, as a final abomination, it came to pass nine months later that Jokovhead gave birth to a frail and malnourished infant. She named the child Dio, which meant bringer of fiery destruction on account of his red tufts of hair and then left the baby deep inside the forest, hoping that it would die. Even if she had lost everything, making sure that atrocity would perish would be her final act of resistance. Oh my god, is this Bowser's dad? I don't know. Cause then it, had, old it had man. tufts of red hair, yeah. Oh my god. Bowser has tufts of red hair? But an old man named Ramsey, who is more dedicated adherent to than than most had followed Jokovic into the forest, knowing her intent to murder her kin Dio, 
despite whom the child is. Surely he deserved the same freedom and agency as anyone else. And it was clear to Ramses that Dio was only part Koopa. Oh! Oh. Sorry, I just understood that Jochebed and, and, and Dario essentially had a child. Oh! And that's why she, she left it in the forest. Oh, wait a minute, was it consensual? It wasn't consensual, was it? Probably not. God. No! Oh god, don't blame her! Yeah. Rodeo was not bald and had a malformed shell that was co that only covered his back. Moreover, the scoots on Dio's shell were defective as they were weak in their center. While most Koopa were able to curl up into a ball, Dio could not and was vulnerable to attack. He had a slender fi yeah. frame and great difficulty carrying himself around, yet Ramses was immensely sympathetic and still felt protected of Dio, despite these obvious deformities. Blessed was Ramses, who endeavored to teach Dio the way of the world. Dio learned about the evils that had been done upon the Koopa tribe and felt a deep anger inside himself. Ramses also taught Dio about the meeting of the twelve tribes and how some people said the tribes could live in harmony despite their differing beliefs. But Ramses viewed this narrative as allegory, because the idolization of multiculturalism would cause people to fail to admonish other tribes for their moral failures. Not only did the authoritarianism of the humans call this idea into question, but also the destruction of the Bama, the murder of the booze. And those who only wished for a society composed of unified but distinct cultural groups would surely be forced to accept in other principles that they call themselves the poor. So no society could be stable without an overarching ethos of goodwill and secularism, and Ramses' teaching resonated with Dio for a few times he had seen other Koopa, they turned their heads away as if to pretend they lived in a world where Dio could have not been conceived. And one day, Dio asked Ramses if the Koopa tribe was also inherently morally broken, for none of the Koopa would even acknowledge his existence. At that moment, Ramses felt a pang of guilt due to Dio's innocence and told him the likely truth of Dio's parentage against his better judgment. Upon hearing the very thing, upon hearing that he was the very thing he was sworn to destroy, Dio set out from Ramses' house and began walking in a random direction with the subconscious intention of meeting his end. Dude! Dang, okay. Well, I just had a problem with that. <laughs> I'm just like, in my brain I'm just like, oh my god, my boy Dio is suicidal, and you're like, this is getting good! <laughs> <laughs> my bad. No, you're good, you're good. I just found that funny. This is some good-ass storytelling, man. I did not think fucking World War II shit was gonna pop up, but you know, things happen. So, Dio ventured a great many kilo shells away from the Ramses' house and found himself in the middle of a desert. And he felt himself grow gradually dehydrated because there was no water about. Right about when he was willing to collapse on the ground from exhaustion, Dio noticed there was a purple star in the sky, and out of morbid curiosity, Dio walked in the direction of the star. He did not have enough energy to even think what he was doing, but by the time his muscles gave out, he had reached a desert oasis. When Dio came to, came to the next morning, there was a Kong sheep herder nursing him back to health, and Dio asked the herder, How could you have sheep in the middle of the desert? And the herder replied that, these are sand sheep that eat sand. Because Dio had nothing better to do. He asked the sheep herder whether they could become business partners. And the sheep herder agreed. So, Dio and the herder gradually built a profitable small business selling sand sheep wool. And one day, Dio was out tending his flock when he saw a shrub that was burning but not consumed. And so, he approached the burning shrub and wondered why it had not been reduced to a crisp. Because Dio knew that the flame was produced by a combustion reaction that would 
should be destroying the physical structure of the shrub. But he went wait, to- Wait, wait a minute. He went to- <laughs> Is this the fucking Bible thing where the fucking fire bush talks to him? Oh, please let this Dude, be Dude, I don't- Oh my god, yes, it is. Oh you're right! I was like, I, cause I remember being in like a, in a shitty movie a while back. Is it in the fucking, like the uh, Prince of Egypt? It was very popular from DreamWorks, I think. Yes, I love the Prince of Egypt. It is my everything. Yeah, wasn't, wasn't that scene in there so where good. he talks to the bush and it's on fire and then God's like, you gotta go do that shit over there. <laughs> I don't think he said like I that. I don't know. <laughs> More biblical. <laughs> That's so, he's good. Hey. Moses, do that shit over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The Bible, if written by Gen Z slash Alpha. <laughs> no. No, you said Gen Z, and I, I thought you meant like Gen Z slash Alphas, and I'm saying not Alpha. <laughs> okay. So he put his hand next to the flame that found it, but found it that it was no harder than the desert air surrounding him. This devastating, this devastated a plan that had formed in Dio's mind to construct a perpetual motion machine. But when Dio had thought he could not get any more confused, he heard a voice from no observable source. What are you doing? Such a small business. No. Said the voice, presumably coming from the shrub. Well, the government has implemented reasonable tasks. Taxation policies that encourage the formation of SMEs in my Sanchi business, replied Dio. Perturbed, the bush clarified. I mean, why have you abandoned the Koopa people to meet their demise via human brutality and a stroke of nihilism? Dio stated that culture is inherently baseless anyway, so what does it matter if a people die out? Dio then furthered. I mean, sure, this whole thing, this whole genocide thing is reprehensible and all, but... There's nothing I can do. I might as well just try to live the best life I can. What Dio did not know is that he was speaking to a cursed but omniscient, uh, omnipresent being composed entirely of morality. And this entity had been cursed so that any action he took to try and fix the broken world would incur an equal and opposite reaction. The defective god could barely feel anything other than self-pity. Ray knew how easy it was to right the wrongs of the world, but could not act himself. But the deity knew that he would have to have, he would have no luck trying to bargain with Dio. Only Sin was wanting to maintain his own well-being rather than take actual action that would harm himself and unlikely to change anything. And the being knew that in his position of security, Dio was fundamentally incapable of reaching beyond his own experience to a place where collective responsibility exists. The being felt tortured because of its apparent powerlessness to stop the atrocities being made by humans. And so, in a moment of apparent weakness, the spirit poured fire into Dio's body and soul so that he may, he may live up to the, his name set fate and become a savior of people. But the god knew in making the decision, it was only shifting the harm the humans were inflicting from one time and place to another. The next day, there was an article in the local business publication about how a successful sand chief, herder, sand chief trader had received a spiritual awakening and was leaving this world of business to go fulfill his divine purpose. But before Dio could save his people, he first had to learn how to use his new power. The solution to his deficit of physical strength was obvious. He would go train with the Wiggler monks in the poison jungle. So, he arrived at the Wiggler monastery and asked the head monk, Ri Tao, when he could begin training. And Ri replied that he already had, for every moment of his life was an opportunity to learn. Ri Tao then looked inside of Dio to see how many key points he had. The count of Dio key points was five, an amount so high that Ri was amazed and asked how such a thing was possible. Dio particularly responded to this and asking questions about what exactly key is. Ri told that told Dio the nature of key. Key is the life force that courses through our world and facilitates the existence of life. It can only be seen after years of training. 
and it is innate and immutable quality of all individuals. The amount of key points that a key user has directly defines the maximum possible level of strength that they can achieve. Even a one key difference of pow in power between opponents will always define who will win. Additionally, a being with three key points such as myself has been found to be greater power in the combined force of seven other wrigglers with one key. So, the power of of a key user is not proportionate to the number of key points. Key can be used with special warriors, of which there are only a handful that are known. Damn. <laughs> I didn't Damn. think we're gonna get genocide this chapter, but <laughs> I, I guess n new stuff happens all the time. <laughs> I, I get I genuinely have no words for that. I do not. I mean, I... F I did bring... Wait, I... I feel like, uh, what is his name again? Dio? I feel like his story follows uh -huh. the whole, like, Prince of Egypt thing. Like, his people are being you think You think Dio is, Mo uh, is Moses? I feel like he is. I feel like he's about to be Moses right now. I'm trying to remember the Bible's story. I wish, I wish they put him in the river. You know, I'm about to go over. I, uh, you know, my my mother-in-law Amy is very religious. I'm about to just go up to her and be like, "Hey, what part of the story does the guy talk to the burning bush? <laughs> is that Moses?" Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'll probably ask Cameron. He's religious. I can be like, "When did when did the man talk to the bush?" <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it follows that same story. Like he ran away, his people are in danger, and then <laughs> God was like, "You gotta you gotta go do that shit." <laughs> And he's like, maybe you're right, God, and then he just fucks off and doesn't do it. I feel like that's where the story's going in the next few chapters. Definitely not because I scrolled up one. Uh, he probably trains with these monks. <gasps> really? Is I mean, my that's where it yeah. <laughs> I can't believe the Wigglers are martial artists. I didn't see that coming. <laughs> Or, like, some like renowned fighters. But you know what? I'm glad we read this again. It's good to get my daily dose of religion every once in a while and whatnot. Say that I'm cultured. Every six months. Yeah, every six months. I, I it, It's kind of like when, uh, like, you have, like, you see that one person go in the church every, like, two years. It's, like, one for Easter and one for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm like that. <laughs> I'm like, yep, just, uh, just came by, showing my face around here, yep, very- I'm- I'm religious. And then they go fuck off until Christmas. <laughs> and you know what, it's true, you- you see people like that all the time in church. Mm-hmm. But you know what, very good read. Even though there were some words I was stumbling over over like a fucking idiot. <laughs> the words that I should know how it's to okay, pronounce. It's okay, it's okay. It, it, you know, things happen. Yeah. It was, it's a fairly long chunk of text to read. Yeah, and it, it, it doesn't help that I'm, like, I read the same line over because <laughs> they all look the same. But you know what? 8 out of 10. Mm -hmm. What's, well, I can't wait to see Waluigi Jesus become a thing. It, it's gotta be. The Waluigi book is called the waluigi or something. He's, he's, He's gotta be in here somewhere. We haven't even- we're on- we're on chapter 4 and we're not even. Yeah. Well, I mean, Jesus didn't get introduced to the New Testament, so... <laughs> this seems pretty accurate. I feel like at the end of the sixth chapter we're gonna get introduced to Waluigi. Okay. And then he's gonna bless people by going like, wah! <laughs> All right. You know, you know what it's well. Now? <laughs> I'm assuming you said the wheel because I did not hear anything. Yes. Wheel. The wheel. Woo! You know what time it is. The wheel. The time. <laughs> All right. Shuffle, Nothing shuffle, wrong shuffle. has happened ever. It's absolutely not. That's crazy. All right. Let's see what we got. Oh my god. 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 <laughs> it will never land on my choice. 
<laughs> it was Look Mary at that Clip. shit. What have you? That is literally. Look at honest. that. It's half. <laughs> yeah, uh, this shit's rigged. I call for a <laughs> revote. But look at that, more cores <laughs> on. That's really good for us. Mhm. Mm I'm so excited for that thing because I've been dying to read it, and I know we can't. And now I've I've been made the honorable decision of not reading it without oh. you. Oh yeah, that's so selfless of you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm trying really hard. Yeah. Honestly, I do want to figure out what happened with like how we got picked up by Mihawk and like how the fuck do we end up working with the Marines and now we're in Mobile Del Flamingo uh -huh. all of a sudden. I need mm -hmm. to know the lore. I need to know why our double fruit power is so shit. <laughs> Honestly, I think her devil fruit power is very cool. I don't know. I, f I feel like it's a double-edged sword and whatnot. I'm like, we end up getting hurt a lot for healing other, like another person. We can regenerate. It's fine. Yeah, we, bro, it took us two days to get our leg back. Two days? That's look. Some people never get their leg back. <laughs> we're lucky. We could be shanks. We could be without an arm forever. But no, Damn. we're lucky. We could grow it back. And yeah, that sucks for him. <laughs> Rest in peace. R.I.P. I mean, arm. Pieces. <laughs> no, I got uh, cut off in one piece. <gasps> the one piece? <laughs> the one piece is real. One piece! The one piece is real! Dude, I have such brain rot from that expression that anytime I- Dude, I started Pikmin 3, and like, it was a travesty, like, they, like the little guys got- Like, the little captains of the crew got separated from one another, and I was like, oh, thank god. I'm all right, and I made it out in one piece, and I'm like, oh, the one piece! And I'm like, this is serious! <laughs> that man's- that man's friends can be dead or injured, and I'm just making one piece jokes. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. Yeah. Alright, I guess that does it for now. While well, Luigi is, I'm going back on the shelf for now. Until we, uh, we spin it again on the wheel. Which hopefully is soon, and not six months. Or else this is going to be like us pulling like a thing in church. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Yeah, but I'll have it down be below in the description if you guys want to read it on your own time and support the author. Even though it's just the, the words are too big. Too big adult words. I, I can't. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> reading. <laughs> and then uh, thank you for Jolie for joining me on this one. I highly appreciate it. It's, it's, it's fun. It's fun. An another Tuesday session for us. <laughs> yeah, just easy peasy. Yeah. <laughs> Very enjoyable. It's it's. A... And then uh, make sure you check out the playlist on stream for other Wattpad readings with uh, maybe other people. Jolene's in there, somewhere, probably with a lot of law stuff. We read a lot of law. <laughs> yeah. But... But anyway, my name is Phoenix, that was Jolene, and we'll see you guys next time! Woo. Bye! Bye!